of the FBI. He joins us tonight. Mr. Kallstrom, you spent your life at the FBI. You're a very, obviously, famous leader at the FBI. When you watch the last years, you've watched it unfold, how do you think the Bureau is doing? Well, the leadership of the Bureau and the leadership of the department are doing well at all, Tucker. I mean, it's just outrageous. You know, I look back at some records, and during the SNLs in the 80s and 90s, you remember that, you know, yes. literally thousands of uh, SNLs that, that went belly up, and a lot of corruption, a lot of criminality. Not one law firm in the United States, <laughs> not one law firm was ever served with a search warrant for that whole period of time. And yet wow. this little four-person or five-person law firm that just happens to be the laws, the law firm of the President of the United States, uh, is attacked uh, by uh, pen registers, by surveillance, by uh, search warrants. And, you know, to get a search warrant from a federal judge in the criminal side, you, you, have, to, you have to talk about a, a criminal act that's, that's taking place, a criminal predicate. And on the national security side, for the FISA judge, you have to talk about the threat to national security and, and talk about, yes. you know, why it, it's going to be affected negatively in both cases without these extraordinary measures. I, I think it's far-fetched. I, I, I'll, uh, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but to see what kind of a predicate they could have possibly had in this case. Well, so if it turns out that this really is all about a payment to a porn star, and I hate to say it, but let's be honest, it's just not a surprising story. Nobody voting in 2016 is going to be surprised by this. If it and, turns and, out that's really the predicate right. for this, and, and, what yeah, do you and, think and, of that? And nor is it surprising that Bob Mueller would do something like this. It's Bob Why Mueller's do you say that? It's, Well, I mean, look at the history. Look at how he went into Paul Manafort's house and had four o'clock in the morning. Here's a here's a potential if if by worse cases a white collar crime stuff, and you go yeah. into a house at four or five in the morning with the uh, with weapons shown. You drag a, a woman out of bed in her nightgown, and her children are, I assume, screaming, yelling around the house. I mean, that's just an outrage. We don't operate like that in the United States. If I was the head of the FBI, I would, I would have not let the agents participate. Now, this is something that came from Mueller up to the U.S. attorney in New York. And they apparently put together an affidavit, and I guess the FBI was involved with that, and that was presented to a federal judge. And when you go into a lawyer's office, you've got to be really careful. And the way it works today, you have really two teams of people. One team goes in and does the search. Another team kind of looks through the material to try to segment out anything that would be a privilege. And in this case, the federal judge, who now has control over this case, has gone a step further and is turning all that material over to a senior federal judge, Barbara Jones, who is a fantastic judge, a good friend of mine over the years. And she'll decide, you know, what the U.S. government gets to see and what the U.S. government doesn't get to see. Right. But you think, and I should just clear it up for audience who aren't familiar with your career, I wouldn't describe you as a soft on crime liberal at all. But you think, based on decades at the FBI, that what you're watching now is out of line. There's no precedent for it. Tucker, I don't believe in kicking in doors unless there's a reason for it. And I don't believe right. for having outrageous search warrants, you know, unless there's a real bona fide reason. Is there a criminal predicate for this? I'd be surprised if there was. If it is, it's probably like some concoction from some, you know, stupid intelligence contact. Or is it a national security uh, predicate? I find that would be preposterous. You know, I just think these people are out of control. From the very time that Donald Trump was the nominee of the Republican Party, there has been a conspiracy, a fifth column, call it what you want, that has tried to stop him from getting elected, and number two, stop his effective work for the people of this country. And look at the magnificent job he's done in the economic front, in the foreign relations front, in a year and a half. In my view, more than the last three presidents combined. I, I, I'm just I'm awestruck that you're saying this because you're not a cable news talking head and any of our viewers who are not familiar with your career ought to go to Google and look it up. Uh, you speak with authority on this subject and so I'm, I'm, I'm shocked by what you said and saddened but I believe you because you are believable on this subject. Mr. Kalstrom, thank you for joining us tonight.
My pleasure. No, I don't have the facts, but that's my record. That's what I think is the situation, Tucker. Well, you have perspective, that's for sure.